we have learned previously how to find the error of the computed value and uh, if the error is known of the computed value, what should be the error in the individual measurements. So, these two things we have learned yesterday uh, previously. Now, we have to go for working out a problem, so that the whole concept is clear. Before working out, there we have to see the what are the rules we should follow in uh, finding the error in the computed value. So, that is what is given here, four steps are given, four points to be noted when we are computing the error in the computed value. All the errors of uh, say delta x 1, delta x 2 and so on of individual measurements may be up to two significant figures, because it is an error giving uh, more than two significant figures, uh, there is no uh, not much sense. So, uh, most of them are given up to one significant figure, but we can go up to two significant figures. If it is given more than two significant figures, reduce to two significant figures, that is the first step. The errors, individual errors of the measurements uh, should be reduced up to two significant figures, it can be one significant figure also. Then, while we, while we are computing the propagated error in the computed value, we are finding the deri partial derivatives dou f by dou x 1, dou f by dou x 2, dou f by dou x 3 and so on. That should be computed up to three significant figures. And then, uh, with these values, we are computing delta q by using the formula delta q is equal to root of uh, delta x 1 into um, delta x 1 into dou f by dou x 1 whole squared plus delta x 2 into dou f by dou x 2 the whole squared and so on, we are computing. The delta q, that uh, error in the del computer value can may be com computed up to three significant figures, three significant figures, that is third. And then, uh, then only we are supposed to compute the nominal, nominal q, nominal computed value. So, we do not do it at the first, because up to what decimal place q should be obtained will be known only after, compute, after computing delta q. So, q up to one more decimal place, we have to find out one more decimal place uh, than that of delta q, than that of than that of delta q. We have to compute and then and then round it off to the same decimal place as delta q. That is why I, I told q should be found out nominal horsepower or nominal computer value should found out after finding the error, because up to which decimal place we have to find out that will be known only after delta q is known. So, noting down all these things, these steps, now we will compute uh, in the given problem the computed value, error in the computed value. So, it reads like the problem reads like this for finding the average power in a uh, rotating shaft, the following measurements were made. So, rotations is measured as in t seconds, that is t seconds is in about 60 seconds, it is measured as 1002 plus or minus 1 revolution. The error of that instrument is plus or minus 1 revolution. Similarly, force at the end of the torque arm 50.0 Newton, because 0 we have put at first time also we can read and that error is plus or minus 0.2 Newton. And the length, length measuring instrument of the torque arm uh, 0.335 meter plus or minus 0.001 meter, that is 1 mm is the error in the measurement of the length at torque arm. And the, uh, with the uh, time piece, we are measuring the time. Uh, 60 seconds, 60.0 seconds plus or minus 0.5 seconds is the error of that time piece. So, we have measured these quantities, with this we are going to compute the horsepower by using this formula. In this case, uh, what is the uh, error of the horsepower? Because in measuring uh, uh, N F L T, we have got different area, different uh, errors and what will be the error of the computer only horsepower, that is our problem. So. <coughs> We first find the uh, partial derivatives, compute the partial derivatives. So, dou h by, so anyhow we can, uh, I can write the following way, h b is equal to uh, 2 pi by 750 n f l by s, n f by t, that is t. So, one part is uh, constant, so I will write the whole thing as k. So, write k, uh, write k into n f l by t. So, this is horsepower. So, now dou h by dou h p by dou n dou n is equal to dou h by dou n is equal to k f l by t is equal to 
it's calculated already 0 0.00234. Similarly, we find the other things do H P by do F that will come about uh, point zero five six two. So do H P by do F do L is equal to point eight point three nine. See, we are computing up to three decimal, three significant figures. So these are three significant figures. Zero, zero are not significant. And here zero, this is not significant. We have got three significant figures five, six, two. And here we have got three significant figures eight, three, nine. That's the rule which you have, which I narrated earlier. And uh, now do H P by by do T is equal to minus point zero four six eight. So you found out the. Uh, the, uh, the partial derivatives. Now we are going to find out delta H p that is uh, the error in the horsepower uh, measure uh, horsepower computation is equal to root of we know do uh, delta x 1 that is delta x 1 is delta n and do f by or do H p by do n do H by do n whole squared for the R p a measurement. Similarly, we have got for the other measurements, we have to write it in the, in the quantities, all the four quantities we have to write. Yeah. And then now if you substitute delta n is equal to, delta n is given as 1 and uh, dou h p dou n we have already calculated and square it and then uh, you find finally the answer is 0 0.028 horsepower. This is the error. So that is error we have found out up to two significant figures and it lies at the third decimal place. So now uh, find out the horsepower, nominal horsepower by using that formula up to uh, one more, uh, um, uh, I mean it, it is coming up, yeah. it is coming at 2.814 horsepower, probably 0 might have come. So it is reduced to this. Now the final value is up to the same decimal place as the error of that measurement. So this is the uh, nominal value. So with the uncertainty if you write. So, it is equal to 2.814 plus or minus pi naught to 8 horsepower. Power is equal to, power developed is equal to 2.814. That is, now you will find this is uh, uh, 100 of, uh, error is 100 of this uh, uh, nominal value. So, we can write also plus or minus 1 percent horsepower. That is the error in the computer value of horsepower, making use of this instrument having different errors. Now, if we uh, uh, suppose if the error is specified and how to select these instruments that you will see next. Suppose uh, we want to find out the horsepower within error of 0.5 percent. What you have found out earlier by using given instruments it gives rise to 1 percent error. Suppose we are interested only 0.5 percent error in the computer value of horsepower that is 0.014 horsepower alone will be error, should be error then what are the type of instruments you have to select. So, that what you are going to find out now. So, we know the equation that is delta x i, i being 1 to n number of instruments is equal to delta q over root n into root n into dou f by dou x i. This is what you have derived earlier. Now, this for the this equation for the parameter here, for example, for the uh, for uh, delta n for the RPM or uh, rotation measurements, delta n that is error in the instrument measuring the rotations. If it is delta n, then it should be equal to that is we are xi term is here n rotations. So, delta q is delta horsepower for this problem, delta you re rewrite for this problem root n, root n here it is four, uh, 4 measurements are there and then dou f by uh, dou h p by dou n. So, this is that this is for the this equation for the rotational measurement, the instrument for rotational measurement. So, we substitute it here uh, delta h power is 0.014 divided by root 4 into dou h p by dou n we already calculated earlier uh, that is 0.00. Uh, that is point not not two three four two three four. This is what you have found out in the earlier problem. Do H P by do n. So now this comes about uh, three or three three rotations. 
Similarly, you find for other parameters, next parameter is dou f that will be coming around in same way if you work it out 0 0.1 Newton and uh, delta L is equal to 0.8 millimeter and uh, uh, delta T that uh, uh, time measuring instrument should have an error of 0 0.15 second. So, these are the permitted errors in the uh, measurements if you want to achieve an accuracy of 0.5 percent or within an inaccuracy of 0 0.014. That means, what are the instrument we have to uh, change? Um, uh, in this, we had already existing for existing here, this is plus or minus 3, so plus or minus understood. This is the error that should have, but what is existing is in, in, in so 3, we have got already plus or minus 1, plus or minus 1 0, it is already available. So, uh, with this instrument we can use it. This is finer instrument than the proposed one, so we can use it. And for the delta f, uh, we have the exit instrument as measuring 0.2. This is uh, plus or minus 0.2 Newton that is existing, that is the existing one, but we want 0.1 Newton. So, we should go for a new instrument. This we can go for new instrument. That is how we use this uh, concept here. Then delta L for uh, measuring length, we uh, what we required is plus or minus 0.8, uh, but what is there already plus or minus. 1 mm what you have got already plus or minus 1 mm. So, this 0.8 this 1 mm we can use it this we are using it this also we can use because not much difference and delta t time the existing inaccuracy is point uh, this is existing inaccuracy is plus or minus 0.5 second, but what we require is uh, 0.15 second. So, we should go for the new one here also you should have new new instrument. So, two instruments we have to change, existing two instruments we can use it. Suppose uh, when you select a new instrument, if you are not able to get 0 0.1 Newton, only 0 0.2 uh, only is there, 0 0.1 Newton like inaccurate instrument that much inaccurate finer instrument is not there and uh, here also we do not get little rougher only is there. So, we can uh, use those instruments because for the uh, rotation instead of one we have got uh, in, uh, yeah, we have got uh, all, we have got already one finer instruments. Then it is required. So uh, with the available instrument, again compute what is the computed error, and if it is within this, we can do it. That is by trial and error, we arrive at the number of uh, uh, type of instruments or error, the errors in the typical instruments as per the availability, and uh, then we check whether it is within the 0.5 percent. So that is how we make use of these equations in deciding the uh, instruments uh, in selecting instruments for a particular computed error. Next chapter we go to dynamic characteristics of instruments, dynamic characteristics of instruments, this is the next chapter, why it is necessary, see mo mo most of the times I or often we may also encounter uh, measurements of of uh, varying signal. If the signal is constant, at least during the measurement, we can uh, read the uh, value in the scale where the pointer stops. This is the scale and where the pointer will be standing here, so 0, 1, 2, 3, so 3 is the reading. That is the pointer has to be stationary to take readings. That is possible only the parameter does not change during the, uh, during the measurement. Suppose it is oscillating, continuously oscillating and uh, it does not have any fixed place, then you cannot note down. So, such signals are called, oscillating signals are called dynamic signals. Dynamic means always changing. So, it is a changing signal, so you cannot make any reading there. In such instances, how to, how to uh, uh, study such things? So, in that case, we go for recording. You record these variations, record the variation of the signal and later on analyze, because in static signal you can note down, tabulate it for different conditions what are the output signal we can tabulate, but such tabulation is not possible when the signal is varying or dynamic in character. So, uh, in the static signal that is static signal, static signal we measure only the magnitude, whereas in dynamic signal we have got two for in dynamic signal we got two quantities magnitude and magnitude 
and uh, the frequency. These are the two measurements you have to make. Because the frequency at which or how often the change is taking place, that is given by the frequency. Magnitude. Suppose this is varying, this is the time and this is your output signal, say output signal XO. If it is varying like this, uh, you see magnitude at different instants varies. Magnitude at different instants varies. Sometimes it is positive magnitude, sometimes it is negative magnitude. So we, we have got this instantaneous varying that we cannot uh, that we cannot say. So then we give so called what is the amplitude? This is called amplitude. That maximum magnitude is called amplitude. So people give the so, so called in dynamic signal amplitude. Amplitude is the maximum magnitude during its variation. Amplitude and frequency. These are the two measurements which will fix the type of variations. Now, for a system, if the uh, suppose we have got an instrument, to that instrument we give uh, uh, we, this is the instrument. Instrument we give the signal x i, uh, which is a varying one. What will be the? This is a dynamic signal. What will be the output? How the output is going to vary? So generally, we know that as uh, the uh, so x suppose x i is a sinusoidal one. T and the x o this is x i, so x i and x o we are plotting in the same axis for the same axis, O e axis. So uh, the the uh, x o will not be of the same shape, and also it may not have the same amplitude. It may be little less depending upon the frequency. So it will have somewhat variations, and afterwards it settles, settle. So they say up to here it's a transient. It's a transient region. This is a transient region. Transient. The later on you find steady state. Once it settles, then it's steady state. But you find when the frequency increases, the amplitude reduces, and also we got some phase lag. This is the phase lag. Uh, some uh, di uh, some difference. See, it doesn't give immediately the uh, output. It takes some time. So this is the overall behavior of any instrument when we give the uh, varying signal. So, depending upon the uh, signal or response of the instrument, depending upon the response of the instrument, we have got three types of instrument: zero order instrument, zero order instrument, zero order instrument, first order instrument, first order instrument, then second order instrument. So, three types of uh, instruments are there depending upon their uh, response for transient for uh, for for the very for the dynamic signal so first you will take zero order system zero zero order zero order instrument zero order instrument it is represented by a0 x0 is equal to ai xi where xi and xo are input and output signal and ao and ai are the physical parameters so it can be rewritten x o is equal to a i by a 0 into x i and this a i by a 0 is normally called sensitivity so k into x i where this is your sensitivity sensitivity of the instrument. So this is equation for the zero order system what does it say the moment you give x i it uh, you get x o uh, according to this equation there is no time lag. And x o is, uh, is this sensitivity is a constant. It is perfectly x o is perfectly proportional to x i. This is the way it is uh, it is understood. So we say this uh, equation can be written in, our, in our two more forms. X o by k is equal to x i. That is what it says. Same equation, mathematical equation, written in a different form. But here x o by we, the, we have got so this equation one. Same equation written in another form. Here if x o output signal is divided by sensitivity then you should get the xi if there is no error. For that purpose, we can use this equation xo by k minus xi is equal to error. So, the xo by k is equal to x should be xi. In ideal situation, since no error, this itself is xi, xo by k itself is xi. In another way, we this to be expressed in the form xo by k divided by xi is equal to 1. That is the proportionality equation. xo by k or we say the xo is perfectly proportional to xi if xo by k by xi is 1 proportionality constant. 
what are the physical systems which obey this uh, zero order system so lever lever mechanism lever mechanism we know we give a displacement xi or d d1 and it comes uh, at the output signal as d2 so the moment you give d1 the output signal appears uh, d2 hence we say there is no time lag uh, and the, the sensitivity is the leverage of the uh, mechanism so we find uh, that uh, it uh, it approximately represents zero order no time lag uh, immediately up, you know, without any time lag the output signal appears and the sensitivity or the uh, leverage doesn't change with the operation of the mechanism or potentiometer potentiometer transducer potentiometer transducer where displacement it is converted into a voltage there also we find the moment you move the output voltage will uh, will be appearing or gear gear machine gear machine with a definite uh, uh, velocity ratio n so the uh, angular rotation of uh, theta appears as n times theta in the output shaft so these are the three uh, principal uh, three uh, uh, mechanisms where you may have the zero order uh, zero order realization but uh, you find some deformation may be there in the lever mechanism potentiometer transducer assumes pure resistance but there may be some capacitance and inductance to that extent there is some time lag gear mechanism we may have backlash so this will affect the functioning as per zero order instrument but otherwise more or less they represent zero order system now we see the first order instruments they are in zero order two terms a0 x0 is equal to ai xi we have to add one more term uh, that is a1 dxo by dt plus same term a0 x0 is equal to ai xi this is our in, uh, equation for the first order first order is d by dt of our own set up yes that is one extra term previously up to from to here we had for zero order now rewriting this to have the coefficient x o as 1 divided throughout by a o a a a 0 a n by a 0 d x o by d t plus x o is equal to a i by a 0 into x i now we have got one more new parameter that is a 1 by a 0 call it as tau time constant tau so tau into now d by d t we can call it as difference operator d so d tau d plus this we call 1 into x o x o bring it outside so we can write the left hand side in this fashion where it capital d is the d by d t x o is equal to this we already seen as k sensitivity k so k into x i so x o by x i is equal to x o by x i is equal to k by uh, 1 plus tau d so we can write this way also so this is the uh, typical equation for a first order instrument now what are the first order uh, devices we have in uh, practice mostly temperature measuring instruments temperature measuring instruments represents first order in nature for example we consider uh, we can derive an equation for a uh, for a thermal for a thermal couple which we, where we will prove that it is of this order yeah for that consider this uh, thermal couple circuit galvanometer so thermocouple A, thermocouple B, and is put in the bath. This is thermocouple junction. The other one may be the ice. Uh, it may be ice cube. This may be ice cube. So ice, which is uh, uh, I see ice. It may be at zero degree centigrade. This is zero degree centigrade, and uh, this is at certain temperature. So certain temperature T. So temperature T1, T1 is the temperature of the uh, bath. Now this is uh, the thermocouple. Now consider the heat transfer of the heat transfer from the bath to the uh, thermocouple junction. The heat, uh, I will draw the thermocouple junctions uh, al alone separately. So suppose this is thermocouple junction and the heat entering through this surface area of the thermocouple junction is equal to the heat gained by this mass of the thermocouple junction that is the principle what we use here to equate that is uh, heat entering through the surface area of thermocouple junction is stored by the thermocouple junction itself suppose uh, uh, u is the 
a heat transfer coefficient through the surface area and A is the area of this uh, surface area of the thermocouple junction and uh, T, T i is the T i is the temperature at uh, any instant T i or T j we call it T j. T j uh, temperature of the thermocouple junction at any instant after inserting the, uh, the term thermocouple junction temperature will increase up to T 1 for at any instant it may be less than this. So, T j is the temperature of the junction at any given instant T j and uh, m is the mass of the uh, mass of the thermocouple junction and uh, uh, c is the specific heat of that uh, material in in this situation we can write this they are equating the two heats tra transmitted through the surface area stored by the is equal to stored heat stored by the thermocouple uh, junction we write this equation u into t1 minus tj into a into a for a duration of dt between a given duration this is the heat that has flown through the surface area heat transfer coefficients area and temperature difference at any instant tj t1 T is the final temperature of the uh, bath and tj is nearing t1 at any instant this is the difference in dt this is what is heat flown through the surface area and stored by the mass is equal to m into m into c into dtj that is uh, it, uh, temperature increase in the junction T j 1 to T j 2 that we call differential D, D T j and also we know the voltage output voltage say it may be a voltmeter voltmeter voltage output uh, is proportional to the T j. So, that is given as E is equal to this equation 1 voltage output E E is equal to the sensitivity of this thermocouple K into T j proportional to the thermocouple junction temperature we get the output voltage. Now, convert T j in terms of E to voltage D T j is equal to D, uh, uh, D E by K substitute, substitute for T j from this equation 2 and rewriting the equation you can derive the uh, you can derive uh, the final equation in the following form M C by U A M C by U A into D E by D T plus E is equal to T 1 times k, k is our input signal, input signal that is the temperature of the bath. So, this is the uh, form. Now, you find uh, this is nothing but our uh, time constant of the thermocouple, this we, we denote d and the e as 1, e uh, making it as 1 bring it e outside is equal to t i is that is k is the sensitivity, t i uh, our t 1 is our input signal. So, you find uh, x o this is our x o this is your x i. So, we find this is our x i. So, it is of the form x o by so tau d uh, tau d plus 1 into x o is equal to k times x i. This is the standard form of the or x o by x i is equal to k by 1 plus tau d. So, this is the standard notation for any first order instrument that is how the instrument is behaving. This is just to prove there are the temp temperature machine instruments are of the first order. Similarly, mercury in glass thermometer can be worked out and you get the finally equation uh, equation of this form that is why we say it is first order instrument. Now, how the first order instrument responds to a uh, to a dynamic signal? How to find out? In zero order system, we did not have any such problem because there is no time lag and the proportionality is maintained always. But uh, in this first order and second order instruments, uh, to understand the behavior of these uh, uh, instruments, we should give some standard input. The first in such a standard first, in first input is, is called step input. That is, we suddenly give that input all of a sudden and uh, watch how the instrument is behaving. So, we uh, uh, then from that we know the behavior of the instrument. Suppose, uh, the x i is equal to x s x i is equal to x s is step input x s is given. Then we put that uh, x i as x s in the uh, pair character equations tau d plus 1 into x o is equal to k times x s. So, this is a, dif a differential equation where the you can find out the uh, e uh, variation of variation for x o if I you can get an expression for x o. So, x o is equal to uh, k k x s into 1 minus e to the power of minus t over tau d 
this will be the variation of x o. So, that is uh, uh, solving the differential equation. You get the complementary function, particular integral, and using that formula method, we can get this expression x o is equal to this much. So, to understand this equation, we plot it. So, this can be understood in uh, three ways x o by uh, next to x o by uh, x o by k, it can be written different way x s into same equation written in different ways x s into uh, 1 minus e to the power of minus t over 2 and another way you can write x o by k by x s is equal to 1 minus it is non dimensional minus t over 2 this is equation 3. So, these three ways, so no bracket is required, only two terms. So, the same equation given in terms of three, uh, three different forms. Mathematically, there is no sense, but uh, in measurements, it represents something that x o, there is output signal itself is of the form. So, if you want to plot the first equation, you will have this uh, 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 plot like this, that is here x, x i and uh, x o are plotted. Now, this is our x s constant with the time, it is constant. The output signal k times x s around that it is going to vary, that is k times x s will be there, k times x s. So, the uh, variation will be uh, will be following like this, this uh, exponential, exponential varying. At the time t is equal to infinity, it will be k times x s. This is the graph for uh, the equation 1, equation 1 and for equation 2, you write uh, K, uh, this is x o by k, x o by k and also x a also you can plot. So, you find this is x s yes, and uh, x o by k will be varying with, with the x s is uh, at the at the time of infinity uh, when t is equal to infinity you find x o by k is equal to x s itself. So, this is the plot for the second equations. So, you find it varies x o by k x o by k. This is our x s, x s or x i. Similarly, if we plot third equation, it is non dimensional, non dimensional t s axis, o axis non dimensional x o by k by x s. Then the infinite value will be 1. When t is equal to infinity, this, this ratio becomes 1. So, this non dimensional 1. So, we have to plot. So, we find same equation written in different uh, way of uh, mathematics. Mathematically, all are equal. But uh, in measurements, you will find it represents different graphs. So, from here, what we learn, suppose you take this, uh, <coughs> uh, say second, uh, second one x o by k is equal to this one. So, x o by k should be equal to x, uh, x s or input signal. Suppose we, uh, suppose uh, we have the settling uh, error is, so this is x o by k. So, 0 0.95 times. 0.95 times x o by x o by k by x o by k. This is x o by k. 0.95 x o by k. It is called 5 percent settling time or even we can uh, represent in the non dimensional also. So, x o by k by x s if you, uh, if you want. 0.95 times when it comes, we say the uh, error zone. This is the error zone for 5 percent settling time. We say 5 percent settling time. what is the time taken is called the 5, uh, 5 percent settling time. Within 5 percent of the final value, how much time it takes to come to that value is called 5 percent settling time. That is say we, we, we can have that is uh, T, T 1 called T 1 that is 5 percent settling time for this instrument may be say 10 or 15 seconds. So, it is equal to normally 3 times time constants. If you make it 0.95, you will find T over 2, T over 2 will be around uh, will be 3 that is the 5 percent settling time. This is one of the specifications for the standard instruments and you will find from here we derive many other characteristics. When t is equal to tau, when t is equal to tau and uh, this x o by k by x o by k divided by x i will be 0 0.632 that is if it is 0 0.632 somewhere here 0 0.632 then you will find the time whatever time it is equal to tau, tau itself. By using the property for any uh, first, first order instruments, we can find the time constant. Plot this uh, uh, output signal uh, with the t with the t as x axis and 0.62 times the final value, 
um, draw a parallel line and where it and where it meets the time decides the time constant of the instrument. So to measure the time constant of any unknown instrument uh, of an uh, uh, unknown time constant of a given instrument, we can conduct the experiment and find the time constant. So this is regarding the step input. For step input, the instrument will behave like this. At time infinity, it will, the output will vary exponentially. At time infinity, it will reach the, uh, the final value. So time infinity, we cannot wait. Where the instrument, when it reaches point 95 times the output value, or within 5 percent of the final value, we say the instrument has given the correct reading. There is error will be here with an error of plus or minus 0.5. And the plus side, it does not go. It is only minus error. This is what is happening. Now we see the ramp response. We have seen the step response. Ramp response means at a given velocity, the input signal is continuously varying, incre say increasing. That is, we say velocity dot dx i by dt, its velocity. So this is a constant velocity. So x i s dot is a constant slope. Say so x i will be increasing as time increases. So that way, instead of x i being a constant value x s, here it is in increasing from zero onwards. If that is the input, it is called ramp in, ramp input. Yeah, ramp response. Uh, ramp input. This ramp input response of the instrument for this ramp input is called ramp response. Yeah, ramp response. Now, for this, uh, pre, the equation we go for the equation for the first order system. Two d plus one into x o is equal to k times x i. Now, x i here is equal to x i s dot into t. That will decide the when t is equal to zero, x i is zero. So, a uh, proportion to t, the xi is varying. So, this is the xi term, xi is dot, uh, xi is dot. This is step in step velocity input. That is, gives suddenly at the given velocity, it is varying into t. Time is the second. Now, this again a differential equation. You have to solve it for xo, and uh, you will get uh, this is the uh, equation for the uh, xo. Now, we write uh, rewrite in the uh, rewrite it so that we get uh, the following following form x o by k minus x i that is x i x i s dot into t is equal to uh, we know it is uh, x i that is x i is equal to x i is equal to x i s dot into t this is our x i signal. So, x i is the k we brought it here then x i is dot in t will be x i that is brought this side x i as x i and remaining terms are uh, x i s dot x i s dot into tau e to the power of minus t over tau minus tau into uh, x i s dot x tau into x i s dot. So, this is the uh, final form. Now, it has got a uh, some interesting shape that is x o by k should be equal to x i if the instrument does not give any does not pose any error. So, if there is error x o by k that is ideal value is subtracted from the actual value x i then we got this is actually our error. Yeah. This is the error, error at any instant x o by k minus x i is error is so, equal to x i s uh, dot into tau into t to the minus t by tau minus see this is, uh, is a function depending upon the time at any instant and when t becomes infinity this terms disappears and finally it settles here. So, tau into x i s dot x i s dot velocity input signal varying with speed into the second will give the input signal dimension. So, this will be the steady state error, this is transient error, transient error and steady state error. So, now if we plot you will have this form with the time x i we plot also x i x o by k also we plot in this uh, y axis. Now, this will be our this is our x i yeah, x i versus t this is our x i the slope being x i s dot and now the if you plot this equation uh, x o by k now you find it will have this following following shape. So, it is a uh, varying one later on it settles as parallel line it settles. So, until it parallel lines comes it is a transient behavior that is illustrated by this side and once it settles then you will find error is always constant steady state error. This is the steady state. This is here steady state error. Tau into tau into x i x i s dot is our steady state error. This is the steady state error, and the slope is always x i s, and the steady state time constant is equal to tau. Steady state time lag. Steady state time lag is tau. That's why you got this ordinate 
uh, this uh, this side tau into x is divided by tau will give the slope yeah that is how we get it steady state time lag is tau in uh, uh, first order instrument and steady state error is tau into x is dot this is the inference what we get that is for the uh, ramp response next one is frequency response this is two first one is step response third is frequency response right capital so frequency response that is we are giving a input signal previously first we gave a step as input signal second we are giving steadily increasing as the input signal third we give a signal of of this order say it may be around a value it may be varying this may be the variations which you want to study how the suppose this is x i and this is time the such, such type of signal if it is given to this instrument how the instrument is going to give the output for that you suppose uh, the, um, this if it is sinusoidal in nature you can write this uh, signal as x i is equal to a i sin omega t in this form you can write this variation that is omega is equal to this is 0 to this is our 2 pi 2 pi own full cycle so the for, uh, for suppose uh, for that own full cycle t then omega in this case equal to 2 pi by t1 that is your omega in this variation so for own full cycle whatever it is taken so 2 pi is the own full cycle 2 pi by t1 will be the omega value so any such variations uh, if you can uh, find out plot it in a recorder later on you can write the t variation in terms of this um, input signal ai being this is ai my amplitude of this vari vari variations so omega omega is this 2, per 2 pi by t1 a is the amplitude of the variation then the output signal as i we have seen the earlier the output signal after some transient it will settle at a particular value so that is equal to we can write in terms of this sin omega t plus phi omega t plus phi so output will be of this uh, of this nature where the AO will be may not be same as AI, it will be different from AI. It can be mostly it will be different from AI. Also, you find the phase lag of this is phase uh, phase difference. It's phase difference, phase difference. That is the output signal doesn't uh, appear immediately. It is uh, uh, it is uh, lagging or leading. So whatever it is, some phase difference will be there uh, for the output signal. Now the uh, the uh, in the output you have got two parameters a o and uh, phi they have to be found out in that case we can write that equation for the output signal how to find this a o and phi for that uh, we go back to our uh, uh, first order instrument uh, equation that is tau d plus one into x o is equal to x i k times x i now writing. Uh, the one standard procedure is write d is equal to i omega then i omega i, I omega to plus 1 into x o is equal to k times x i and then writing x o by x i x o by x i in terms of i omega this means in terms of i omega is equal to k by 1 plus 1 plus i omega to this is a complex number its magnitude ratio is obtained x o by x i you can bring k this side by k the magnitude ratio is equal to 1 over k is brought there root of square root of this 1 plus omega square to square so that is a o by uh, a o is represented k uh, x o amplitude of x o is a o amplitude of x i is a i so but here it is written in terms of x o by x i x o and x i so this uh, for from here uh, we write the magnitude ratio from which we get AO or XO by K or XO and then phase difference equal to 10 minus 1 of by 10 minus 1 of minus omega tau. So in this case it is in the denominator. So phi is this. So we find AO can be obtained or AO in terms of XO can be obtained. Phi also is obtained from this uh, equation. Now if you plot, we have got this uh, equation. If you plot the frequency response that is uh, omega frequency x axis and uh, x o by k by x i mod we plot it and uh, in that should supposed to be 1 always but as omega increases it is drooping down this is one ideal value. So uh, if the error is uh, if error can be 0.5 percent error so this may be 0.95 so what is the omega maximum 
so that is how bandwidth is fixed for instruments this is the bandwidth of the instrument bandwidth of the instrument if 5% error is permitted due to uh, due to dynamic signal we find there is always error this is another error source we have learnt uh, error sources many from uh, inside instrument outside instrument and so on but the for dynamic signal that was a static signal for dynamic signal one more source is as frequency increases again error is increased and for 5% error omega maximum is obtained from here this 0.95 just come here that will be omega maximum 5 will be suppose uh, 5 frequency and 5 this is minus value so suppose it is pi by 2 minus pi by 2 so it will be varying like this that is the phase difference will be proportional to omega such a thing is permitted so that is the frequency response of the first order instruments